now it's my pleasure to introduce the first short course that will be given uh, at our summer school by Antonio Artes Rodriguez. And uh, he will give an introduction on probabilistic machine learning. And he's one of the experts for this topic. He's full professor at the Universidad Carlos Tres de Madrid. He specializes in signal theory communications and, and in particular the, the information theory behind it that reaches deep into probabilistic machine learning. He has worked on more than a hundred research projects in this domain. He's not only a successful professor, he also founded uh, a company, Evidence-Based Behavior, um, which develops healthcare solutions for psychiatric patients using AI. So he's the person to introduce us to this field of probabilistic machine learning. Antonio, we are very happy to have you as a speaker here. We also have, are very happy to have you as a long-standing member of our ITN, this one and the previous one. Thank you. So the, the floor and the word is yours, Antonio. Okay, thank you, Karsten, for your gentle introduction. Well, uh, good morning to all. <clears throat> uh, uh, it's a pleasure to be here at the uh, summer school for providing a, a sh short uh, overview of what probabilistic machine learning graphical and latent variable models are. Uh, okay, well, this this uh, short course it is not a, a it it will not cover only the uh, last. Uh, advanced in, in, the, in the field. Here you can see a, a tweet from some weeks ago. So uh, in which it's, uh, Neil Lauren emphasized that there is a, has been a long journey until uh, the, the, the result we have now at, at a hand in probabilistic machine learning. So I will uh, explain things that have been proposed uh, several years ago, okay? Well, the aim of the of the of the course of this short course of this lecture that it is uh, in deep depth of one uh, uh, journal article that is by uh, David Bly. That is, uh, I, I recommend to all of you to to take a look at it. At it. it is uh, entitled "Build, Compute, Critique, and Repeat," and this talk or the structure of this talk will be based on, on mostly on, on this uh, journal article. So the first uh, lecture objective is to offer a basic and comprehensive overview of some latent variable model. Uh, I will put the emphasis in to understand the relationship among different models. So I wanted you to understand what is a Gaussian mixture has in common with a variational uh, autoencoder to see my um, uh, things. And also I want to uh, let you to know that you have the, the, the freedom to play with model. Let's say uh, if, your, if your model or if your, your, your data, it doesn't fit in all the existing model in all the libraries, PsychiNet or whatever your preferred libraries, uh, you can build your own probabilistic model and design your own inference method for your particular research problem. So having this in mind, the outline of the talk will be, first I will give you a short interview, short introduction to probabilistic machine learning. After that, model for discrete and continuous data, latent variable model that will be the biggest part. And well, preparing the, 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 the slide, I think that I have been a little bit optimistic, so I don't know if I will escape or not the last topic that is the, the, the Markovian model for modeling uh, time series or, or, or sequential data. Okay, okay, let's start. Well, uh, this is a, an example of the uh, real dual data uh, <clears throat> that represent the, the data uh, that I am working on uh, almost uh, every day. This is a, a, an example, of what is called the digital footprint. The digital footprint of a person, it is the uh, 
all the data that we can gather passively from smartphone, wearable devices, and etc. So the first thing that you can realize is that your uh, data is not as simple as you can expect because you have you can have uh, data that is that are uh, uh, natural number count data like the step you perform in a given day. Okay, uh, well, I forgot to tell that this is uh, something that it is uh, almost uh, 180,000 days of data from different users. So you have count data, you have real data, more real data, more real data. You can have uh, binary data that is, uh, that basically uh, this data tells you if you have been at home or not. Uh, you have also the number of locations you, you have visited, the, visited that is a, a natural number, uh, very different in magnitude from the uh, number of steps you perform. You can have uh, categorical data and you can have also other binary data. So the data is heterogeneous. So, and you have to learn all of this data jointly. But uh, if this is not enough, to, to deal with heterogeneous data. Uh, in real world application, you have uh, a lot of missing data. So here is representing is a black line. It represents a day of data. But what is not filled, what is uh, white, is the data that there is missed. So you have, particularly in some type of data, you have a lot of missing data. And you have to learn with this and you have, uh, most of the of the uh, current model need the uh, all the data to be complete, and in not if you you do or you you have to perform some uh, imputation. But here we want to uh, attack or to 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 deal with uh, this uh, problem in a in a in a major way in, in a more formal way. So for this is what. Uh, we propose to, to use the probabilistic machine learning itself. It is, uh, let, let's start with the problem setting and the basic definition. Uh, the most simple setting is when you have some uh, data that you observe, you observe capital M uh, data uh, that, that can be composed of uh, several types of data. So you can treat this X as a realization of random variable. And if this is your observation, and you can represent it in a, a graphical model uh, as the number of the variable uh, inside the circle and the circle grade. When, when it is great, it's saying that you, you are observing this kind of data. And this plate, it is that you have N data of those. And this data is related to some unknown parameter theta through some uh, likelihood or probability distribution p of x given theta. So the first thing that you need to uh, establish to specify your model is your joint distribution p of x and theta or if you consider all the data p of d and theta. Okay, this is the, the, the first one. The second one, uh, you have to uh, define what is your hypothesis let's say your prior distribution over the theta parameter over your model, okay? This is the first component in order to uh, specify it. And the thing that uh, you, you have to uh, define uh, also the likelihood. The likelihood is usually uh, given by the physical phenomena that govern uh, all the, all the uh, data. Uh, but remember that the Prior distribution is a true probability distribution, but the likelihood, it doesn't. The likelihood is a deterministic function of the parameter theta when you know the data, okay? And the thing you want to know, it is with the prior and the likelihood, mm -hmm. uh, you want to obtain the posterior distribution of parameter theta after observing the data. If you apply the base rule, uh, you can decompose this into the joint distribution of the data and the parameter uh, divided by the marginal probability of the observation. And this can be, uh, if, if you consider for determining theta, 
Uh, the marginal distribution of the data is just a constant. So the posterior distribution is just proportional to the uh, prior distribution, your hypothesis, times your likelihood, the likelihood of your data. That is this one. So this is your primary goal is to obtain uh, the posterior distribution over the unknown parameter. One quantity that uh, do you want also to know, it is when after observing the data, what is the probability distribution of a new fresh data? This is called the, the posterior predicted distribution. Okay, and the last thing <coughs> it is <coughs> the marginal, uh, the marginal uh, distribution of the data that is known as evidence or the marginal likelihood. It is that you obtain it by integrating it out, by marginalizing over all the possible value of the parameter theta. Uh, this quantity that it is assumed to be, a, a, that there is a constant for obtaining the posterior distribution, in some situations you need it to know. And it is in most of the cases, this is one of the most difficult task in machine learning to, to know the evidence. So you, you want to translate this, that there is a, a model into a, a <clears throat> machine learning problem. The thing it is that, uh, okay, obtaining the posterior distribution of the unknown parameter is the learning problem. So you have to fix, or you have the, the distribution, the posterior distribution of theta. Uh, the <clears throat> predictive distribution it is, uh, is when you want to predict what is uh, uh, the new data, what is the, 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 the form of a new data. This is a prediction task. And the evidence helps you uh, for the problem of uh, model comparison. Because if you have to integrate out for all the possible values of a model parameter, you obtain the evidence. If you compute the evidence for different kind of model, you can compare and whatever it gives you the highest uh, evidence, it is the model that best fit to your data. Okay. Well, additionally to this uh, setting, uh, <clears throat> we have some, we can construct different kind of, of, of model uh, and, and we can uh, make use of different framework. The first one it is uh, you can, or we talk about generative model. If you try to model both simultaneously uh, the, uh, the marginal distribution of the parameter and the likelihood. So it's, uh, everything here is a, uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, a random variable. There is also the, the, uh, the discriminative model in which uh, you want to model the probability of the observation given the parameter or some function of the, uh, of the observation. But here the difference is that uh, theta, it is not needed to be a random variable because you will not model the uh, probability distribution of, of theta. And respect to uh, framework, the one we are interested in is when you want to obtain the true posterior distribution of the unknown known parameter. This is called a Bayesian estimation or probabilistic machine learning. If you want to know not the full distribution, but only a given quantity, uh, it is usually called point estimation. The point estimation could be base point estimation or risk based estimation. Uh, but the, here, the, the, the difference respect to the probabilistic uh, machine learning is that here you are not interested in the full distribution, you want to have a specific value. And even uh, you don't need to assume any randomness around uh, and uh, uh, like in the maximum likelihood. So here you can use the framework of theta not to be a random variable. We will be centered on the probabilistic machine learning. We want to know the posterior distribution of the unknown given the data. Okay. So let's go to the basic model we can make use. Let's say, let's start with the basic piece of a puzzle in order to construct your model. The first thing that you can encounter is uh, binary, uh, binary data. 
So your data is binary, you have the same kind of information. So the first thing you have to do is to establish your uh, likelihood, your measure. Here is the, the most is the uh, binomial distribution. So you, you can assume that this data come from the realization of a Bernoulli uh, random variable, where theta is the probability of, of one. So you can transform this, uh, you put a prior distribution. In this case, we fit a distribution that gives you number between zero and one. So we choose a beta distribution that takes this form and we calculate doing the math, what is the posterior. And the posterior is just another beta distribution with a different set of parameters. This is very important. This is called, or this prior, this is called a conjugate prior. And it is very important because uh, for it, it gives us a fast way for doing inference. Because the inference it is the just a, a estimating or calculating a new set of parameters because the posterior distribution is of the same family, of the same type of the prior one. So it is, we call it this a conjugate prior. This is a desired uh, property of, of one uh, estimator. And in most cases, just for convenience, we will choose conjugate prior, even if we know that it is not the most uh, uh, suitable one, or the one that fits your uh, physical problem better. Okay, so in this case, perform the uh, uh, estimation, perform the inference, <clears throat> is just to count the number of ones and the number of zero and to add it to the parameter of the prior and you have the full posterior distribution, okay? <clears throat> well, in addition to binary, you can extend it to uh, uh, categorical data. So in this case, we can make use of the Dirichlet multinomial model. Obviously, you can have more and more model, but here, uh, <clears throat> this is one of the simple and most common one for categorical data. Uh, you define your likelihood. Your likelihood is categorical data. Uh, it's a multinomial distribution. You, here, you extend for the beta prior to a Dirichlet distribution. That is a some sort of multidimensional beta distribution. Uh, you obtain the posterior distribution that it is using this uh, Dirichlet distribution as a prior, this is a conjugate prior, and your posterior also belong to the Dirichlet distribution with a different uh, parameter, okay? This is the, uh, our second uh, element. And the third element, <clears throat> it will be real data. Uh, that is, here we will make use of uh, a multivariate Gaussian. So as a likelihood, we will assume that our, our data uh, belong or has been generated by a multi uh, multivariate Gaussian defined by the mu, by the mean, uh, uh, defined by the uh, vector mu, and the autocovariance matrix sigma. Okay, uh, <clears throat> your likelihood. So when you transform this uh, into the uh, likelihood for the whole data, uh, you can express it in a compact form in which. Here you have uh, the empirical mean and the empirical uh, autocovariance matrix. This is just a rewriting of the likelihood. Uh, you have to establish uh, uh, a prior distribution over the parameter you want to infer, that is uh, mu and sigma. And in order to achieve a, a distribution, a posterior distribution of those parameters that belong to the same family, one of the options is to, uh, is to use what is called the normal inverse Wisher uh, distribution. So basically it is, you assume an inverse Wisher distribution for your covariance matrix. That is a probability distribution that provides you as a realization uh, <clears throat> uh, mm, semi-definite non-negative uh, uh, matrices like the uh, autocovariance matrix and given uh, sigma, you establish a normal prior distribution for the mean. So after doing the math, you obtain that the posterior distribution is also a, norm, a normal inverse Wisher 
with uh, the different parameter that is obtained and is the number of also, uh, uh, observation. Here you have the uh, empirical mean, and uh, here you have the empirical covariance. So uh, <clears throat> performing inference over this basic model, uh, there is very easy and you have done uh, the, the math or, or other guy has done the math and you only have to calculate parameter in order to specify the full probability distribution, the full procedure probability distribution over your unknown. Obviously, there are more a distribution for uh, binary, for count, and for real data, but this will be enough for now, okay? So with this piece of the uh, puzzle, we can make a different thing, but uh, if we revisit what is uh, our uh, objective, uh, let's say, how can we apply all this basic model for modeling our uh, heterogeneous data? Well, the first thing that you can do, unless you have other information, it is you can use a factorized model. So uh, if you have heterogeneous data and you don't have any other information, you can put uh, the likelihood as a product of the individual likelihood of each type of data, okay? This is the solution you have at hand uh, using this uh, simple model. But if you try to learn uh, the joint distribution, the data type, it doesn't mix. It doesn't mix because each data type is independently learned. So if, when you learn this, the problem is separable. So it basically the solution of this problem is to do the inference for the binary uh, distribution, for the binary data, uh, performing the learning, performing the inference for the categorical data, and for performing the inference for the continuous data. And also, the robustness that is missing data is uh, limited. If you assume that every data is factorized, uh, you don't have any, uh, any powerful tool at your hand because basically the thing that you can do it is, okay, uh, how to deal with the missing data? The most principal way is, okay, marginalize all your missing data. So if you don't observe one of the covariate, let's say uh, one of the, uh, one particular variable of your data, the thing that you can do it is, okay, I still make use of the whole data, the uh, probability uh, distribution, and I marginalize over this variable. So I integrate out this variable in order to, to perform the inference. This makes the problem tractable. So you don't need to do any kind of imputation of you can see the marginalization as an advanced way of uh, imputation. But the thing is that when you uh, uh, do the marginalization, when you uh, calculate the expectation respect to the variable you are missing, so you can decompose the joint probability distribution of X missing and X observed using a base rule. Uh, and it is if you uh, do the expectation over the missing variable, uh, this term can go out. But as, uh, if every data type is factorized, so this conditional of the uh, data observation, it is missed. So this is just uh, the marginal distribution of the missing data. And when you uh, do the expectation, they vanish. So the thing is that the, uh, when, when, when you use heterogeneous data with simple model, using a factorized model. The only thing that, uh, that you can do with missing data is make the problem uh, tractable. So you can compute it without do any kind of, of uh, imputation, but your robustness, like the missingness is very limited. Okay, so let's go to a more elaborate model that is the latent variable model. So here, uh, let's say, in, 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 in addition 
to our observation and the unknown parameter, uh, we have an unobserved. In this case, we will, we will start by the discrete variable z. Okay? So uh, it is uh, the thing we are trying to, to model here. It is okay. Uh, if you want to build more complex model, you can assume that you can observe only part of the data. And the data that you don't observe, it is the uh, latent or hidden variable. So in this first simple model, you assume that your uh, unknown is just a discrete variable z. So you have a distribution over this uh, unknown, so over this latent variable, and you the, the probability of z uh, be equal to k is equal to pi k. Okay, so now we have uh, the likelihood it is by uh, it's different uh, in principle depending of the value of the hidden variable. So the likelihood given z is p of z of x given theta. Okay, so you can construct the uh, full uh, likelihood as if you are observing the z variable. So you, when, when you compute the p of x and z given theta, you multiply uh, the, p, uh, the likelihood, the distribution over the hidden variable, uh, you have this uh, joint distribution of the observer and the hidden variable that, that, that it takes uh, this form. But there is one thing that it is, uh, if you don't observe z, one thing that you can do is you can marginalize over the unknown, over the unobserved z variable. And when you marginalize over z, the thing that you encounter is a mixture model. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so in this is, uh, let's say, if of uh, each one of those pk belong to the one of the previous simple model, okay? And here, your uh, uh, inference problem is to obtain the posterior distribution over all the unknown. So you want uh, to obtain the posterior distribution of z and zeta given all the data. But there is, here there is one thing that is very difficult, that is okay, this is just uh, the joint distribution of the of, uh, observable variable the hidden and the parameter divided by the expected value. So the difficult part for obtaining this posterior is just this expectation. And uh, the, but the difficulty is not uh, because you are not able to do the math and to obtain the formulas. It is because you have to, uh, let's say, evaluate all the probability distribution given, all the possible, uh, all the possible values. Sorry, there is a mistake. Here should be a z instead of an x. So you have to do the expectation over all the possible values on z and all the possible values of t. So it is uh, equivalent to obtaining the evidence. This is a, a hard computational problem. So. When, when we introduce the uh, latent variable here, we will encounter with the mixture model. And depending on the, uh, of the distribution you make or you use as a base piece of the puzzle, you can uh, obtain different mixture models. So remember that we are dealing with this kind of model. Uh, so if your base distribution is a Gaussian, you obtain a mixture of Gaussian. If your main distribution is a, a, a Bernoulli, you obtain the mixture of multinomial, that is that way. Or if your base distribution is a, a categorical, you obtain the mixture of categorical. But most important uh, here is that now you are able to do, uh, to, to, to define heterogeneous mixture. So in the heterogeneous mixture is the uh, unknown variable that uh, factorized, uh, that could factorize over all the possible data types. 
and you can make a mixture model that contain a part of a mixture that is uh, uh, the uh, Gaussian distribution, another that is uh, for you binary data, that is a mixture of multinomial, and you're for your uh, categorical one that is a mixture of categorical. This is the kind of distribution we are interested in, okay? Well, but uh, how can we do uh, inference? So, as we uh, saw, the difficulty is to obtain this expectation. So, in order to circumvent this, uh, we uh, the, there are several uh, proposals that have been made into the uh, literature. So, as the inference problem is hard to solve, we can adopt a different uh, scheme. So the one of the most simple one, it is, okay, you can perform a Taylor series decomposition over the uh, unknown distribution, and you can uh, retain the first two terms. Basically, it is uh, uh, equivalent to assume Gaussian posterior. This is called the Laplace approximation, and it has been proposed several years ago, okay? But this is a, a way of solving it. Limited, but still doable. The other thing that you can do, it is uh, you can obtain a point Bayesian or a maximum likelihood estimation. So for doing this, you have the classical uh, EM algorithm that has been proposed several years ago. And it is, this is when, when it has been uh, formalized because the algorithm is even older. Another thing that uh, we will enter after that into the discussion of the EM and the variational one, okay? Uh, the other method that you can make use is the use of uh, Markov chain uh, Monte Carlo method. So in this kind of uh, approximation, uh, the, the, the thing that you do, you are not able to obtain uh, a parametric form of the posterior, but you are able to obtain sample from the posterior. So uh, one of the simple models of this is the uh, Gibbs sampling, that is basically consists on iteratively uh, sampling for all the conditional probabilities of all the random variables. Okay, so uh, it is it is it works in in in, in this way. So uh, you have all the zi and all the mother parameter. So you obtain uh, all the conditional probability of each of zi, condition to the rest of the z, and condition to the uh, all the observation and all the mother parameter. And you do the same for all the values of i, for all the n values. You do the same for all the model parameter. And basically you order, all, you, all this uh, conditional, uh, you uh, start with a random sample for each one of those uh, with a random value. And uh, let's say using the first conditional, you obtain a random sample from this conditional, you substitute the value of this, uh, 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 this the, the, the value of this uh, variable by the new sample. And using this new sample, you, uh, you, you make use of it for obtaining uh, the next uh, conditional distribution and use sample of it. And you are replacing iteratively all the sample. So this gar uh, guarantees you uh, that at the end, when all the algorithm uh, converts, you are sampling for a uh, posterior distribution of the uh, parameter. Okay, so this is the uh, solution that you have at, at hand with MCMC method and the other is with variational inference uh, optimization. Take into account that it is for uh, point Bayesian, for the EM algorithm and the, for the variational inference algorithm, you transform the inference problem that previously was just a calculation of three parameter into an uh, optimization problem, okay? And in the Laplace approximation, you are still doing just working with a parameter and with the Gibbs sampling, 
In fact, you are solving an uh, optimization problem, but you don't have to optimize. The only thing you have to do is to generate something. Okay, let's go or let's enter into the EM algorithm. So uh, for solving this inference problem uh, in the EM algorithm, it is uh, that the aim is to obtain the parameter theta at the maximum of the uh, likelihood of your data or uh, the maximum of the uh, posterior distribution of your uh, parameter. Sorry, there is a, a mistake here. So you can apply both the, maxi the uh, maximum likelihood of the uh, maximum of posterior, but at the end you obtain only a point estimate. So the only thing that you, you want to obtain is a value for theta, not a full probability distribution, okay? So you have the uh, likelihood of the data, this is the log likelihood of the data, that is the logarithm of the probability of all the data given the parameter, and you can treat it at the, uh, this as the marginalization over the hidden variable, okay? So for obtaining the EM algorithm, for obtaining uh, the best solution or the maximum of the logarithm of the uh, uh, posterior probability of, of, of theta, we replace the hidden variable by a value q of theta for make the problem easier. So the uh, log likelihood of your data can be treated as uh, this one. So we multiply it and divide by the, uh, uh, this function, this auxiliary function q of z. And using the Jensen's inequality, uh, putting the logarithm inside, of the uh, expectation gives you a uh, <clears throat> lower bound of this quantity that is given by the the Kulab, the Kulba label diverging between your uh, likelihood and the distribution over the hidden variable. So the thing is that your problem it is to adjust to find the Q of a set that makes the best approximation. So is to maximize this minus KL diversion on to find the Q of set that is closest to your uh, joint likelihood of data when you observe the data and the hidden variable, okay? And for solving this problem, the EM algorithm put it a uh, coordinate ascent by alternating, this, uh, by alternating between uh, in the ES test is maximize this uh, upper uh, lower bound of the uh, <clears throat> log likelihood by with respect to Q theta when we hold theta fixed. So this is we obtain Q, uh, sorry Q at iteration T of Z as the uh, R max of this uh, complete uh, uh, log likelihood, the, the uh, uh, lower uh, bound of Q and the previous value of theta, okay? And this is the solution of this uh, maximization problem is just the expectation of the Z given the data and your previous value of the parameter. Like in the MC, uh, MCMC method, like in the Gibbs sample, you have to start with a, a value for all the unknown, for all the ZI and for all the uh, theta variable, okay? So, uh, <clears throat> and the other thing, the other step, it is to, once you have obtained the maximum of Q, you maximize respect of theta. So it is you maximize the lower bound with uh, respect to theta, holding Qs of the theta fixed. Okay. So if you uh, <clears throat> do this kind of uh, <clears throat> optimization, that it is alternating this, between uh, this step until the algorithm converge. Okay. The algorithm is uh, the conversion of the algorithm is warranty, so you can uh, demonstrate that your uh, li log likelihood over your data, it doesn't decrease iteration by iteration, okay? I want to uh, make here some, some comment 
that it is uh, okay. Uh, let's say this algorithm. Uh, well, this with with the first step with the E step, you perform uh, the expectation. So you calculate the uh, <clears throat> the probability of Z given all the data. So this is an an, an, an easy problem. Okay. Uh, in the EM uh, algorithm, it is uh, well, it is uh, the the theta parameter in the iteration is fully maximized. Okay, so you can do this, but even the the algorithm converts if this uh, optimization is not a full one. Let's say if instead of find analytically uh, the uh, maximum of the uh, probability distribution of D and Z given theta, you perform a gradient ascent, for example, and you at each iteration of the EM algorithm, you don't uh, obtain the best solution for theta parameter, but just a solution that increase the likelihood of, uh, <clears throat> of the, the, the log likelihood uh, with this new solution, the algorithm still convert. So this framework is, is, is very uh, flexible. So you can apply here uh, the full maximization of a partial of, uh, 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 optimization. So the only thing that you have to do is obtain a solution, a theta solution that provide higher log likelihood. Okay? So, and, and, and if you warranty this, the conversion is also warranted. But there is, uh, there is a, a bad news that it is with all this kind of method, uh, the solution you achieve, you cannot uh, demonstrate that this is the global optimum. So the algorithm only converts to a local optimum. Okay? So this is the EM algorithm. And uh, this is how do you, how do, you do the, the math? Okay, I will not. Uh, uh, enter into the full detail, but okay, it is, uh, it is, you have here uh, the mixture of Gaussian, the log likelihood of the mixture of Gaussian. So here is how you estimate the uh, uh, probability of Z given the data and the previous value of the parameter. Uh, so you continue this, this is the kind of uh, evaluation. Basically the thing that you do, it is the solution to your problem is to use as, the, as this expected value is the posterior probability of Z given the data and the uh, parameter. And once you have this, okay, you replace this into the uh, maximization. So you perform this and you now, it is like, so you perform your uh, optimization algorithm. Uh, for maximum likelihood, you maximize the likelihood, okay? And you obtain the solution if you mix the model and you perform this. So first you obtain those quantities, the posterior probability of the hidden variable. And with the posterior probability of the hidden variable, you re-estimate the model parameter, you substitute the model parameter, and you recalculate the posterior under the new model parameter and you iterate and so on and so forth until the uh, algorithm is uh, stabilized, okay? And you have to perform uh, several reinitialization in order to not warranty, but have a better option to achieve the, uh, lock, the, the global maximum, okay? So you have to, but uh, here, if you want to change your maximum likelihood but your maximum of posteriority, you uh, retain the E step. The E step is the same for all the estimation framework, but now you define some prior over the parameters. So you have to, to, to uh, define some prior over the probability of the mixture that you can make use of a Dirichlet distribution. And you can, uh, you make a, a, you put a prior on the uh, vector mu of mean and uh, sigma uh, covariance matrix, like in the previous one is a number in the wisher and doing the same and uh, using the same quantity that is the uh, posterior probability of the hidden variable given the model parameter, 
you update the model. And with this model, you re-estimate uh, the uh, posterior, pro uh, posterior probability of the hidden and so on and so forth, okay? So the, 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 the basic algorithm, it is the same. So this is one of the uh, solution that you have at hand for solving your inference problem with latent variable model. The other one, or the other solution, it is uh, variational inference. Uh, the difference uh, between variational inference and the EM, uh, or the classical EM algorithm, it is that the, with the variational inference, you don't want to obtain a point estimate, you want to obtain an approximation to a distribution, to the uh, posterior distribution of the unknown let's say of uh, z and zeta var and theta variable, okay? So the problem is that the, 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 the setting is in some ways it is similar to the EN algorithm, okay? But now uh, instead of uh, having a point estimate, you put a, a family of function. So you propose a variational family, so a family of function of z and theta that uh, changes with uh, new variational free parameters. So changing new changes the function, the probability distribution of the variation, the probability distribution over Z and C. Okay? And now the thing that you want to do, and, and it is, uh, let's say, similar to the EM algorithm. So in the EM algorithm, you want to uh, minimize the Kyle diversion between your auxiliary function Q of Z and the uh, <clears throat> probability of the data and the hidden variable given the uh, parameter. So it is, so you use uh, the Kyle diversion as a method of, uh, method of distance so to obtain the closest solution. So in this case, in the case of variational inference, let's say you have to uh, fix the parameter new in order to uh, approximate the full posterior, okay? So uh, the solution of your problem is given by the parameter theta that provide the lowest Kyle diversion between the variational family and the true posterior of the parameter theta and theta, okay? Okay, but uh, one thing of solving it, it is, okay, uh, uh, we can uh, put, uh, or we can define a lower bound of the evidence. Let's say if we uh, uh, subtract the, to the evidence uh, the Kyle diversion that we want to uh, minimize, so, uh, this is an uh, upper bound, sorry, a, a lower bound of the evidence, the logarithm of P of D. And uh, the problem is uh, equivalent, uh, so it is, it is equivalent to minimize the Kyle divergence or to maximize the evidence lower bound, that is the elbow for sure, okay? So now the problem is to maximize this function that can be expressed as the expectation over uh, the unknown of the joint distribution of the data and uh, all the unknown, the hidden and the parameter, minus uh, the expectation over Z and Q of this uh, variational uh, function, okay? So for solving this, this, this is the basic idea, but you have to fix three different uh, things. The first thing it is, uh, what is your variational family? The most simple one, it is, we call it the mean field, the mean field variational family. It is among all the different proposals that you can make for the uh, variational function, for, the, for your solution, for your approximate, for your approximation of the full posterior. One of the simplest one, it is assume that all the latent variable are independent. So in this case, you have all the hidden variable and the theta parameter, okay? The theta parameter are the global parameter. So that is, you have this uh, Q function with parameter lambda, okay? And you assume the independence among all the uh, Zi. 
and also respect to theta. So this is, uh, uh, this provides you the mean field variation of family. If you have uh, additional information that it is, that tells you that there is some link uh, between a theta and one of those zi, you can construct your own variational family. But if you don't have all the uh, information at hand, uh, the, the mean field is a, a classical one. Okay, so uh, so you have to uh, let's say it is what is the how you decompose the uh, variational uh, family, and other it is okay. So you have decided that all the latent variable are independent, but all latent variable and parameter, and now you have to fix the family function for each of one for this q of theta. Uh, or for this q of z, okay? And the one, one of uh, sensible option is to use conditional conjugate mode because in this setting, uh, the posterior of the model will belong to the same family. And uh, well, one, one uh, family that it is uh, very flexible and you can make use of, of, of it, is the are the, the uh, exponential families okay you use the exponential family exponential family uh, shows us a particular case the gaussian uh, the multi the, the uh, bernoulli the uh, categorical etc so it covered a lot of things okay so once you have uh, fixed how to decompose what is the structure of your uh, variational uh, family and what is the uh, distribution or the distribution you can make use on uh, still has to, uh, is, has to solve the, uh, <clears throat> the optimization problem. So with simple model, you can use a coordinate ascent, okay? It is basically it is okay, you take the expectation, the conditional expectation of each one of your para, uh, family of uh, unknown uh, maintain this, the, the, the rest. So in this sense, well, this uh, algorithm is, it is like, uh, is similar to the Gibbs algorithm, but you don't generally sample, you calculate uh, expectation. And it's also similar to the uh, EM algorithm uh, because you, the thing is that you are alternating. So, this could be uh, the uh, equivalent to the E step into the EM algorithm. And this is equivalent to the M step into the uh, uh, EM algorithm. So basically you take the uh, expectation of Z and expectation of theta alternately. So uh, <clears throat> for doing this, you are uh, doing a similar way of there is a, a, a coordinate ascent. The similar, it is exactly the, 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 the same procedure of the EM algorithm. So you perform uh, the expected value, you, you perform this step. So you substitute uh, the, the family you obtain here uh, by the news one and uh, you uh, iterate until you achieve a uh, conversion. The difference with the EM algorithm is that you are now uh, working with parameters that define distribution, okay? But in fact, you are calculating uh, 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 distribution or a sequence of uh, distribution. Remember that this, uh, uh, you cannot guarantee that this is the true form of the procedure and in general, it is not. So, uh, it is a, a purely an approximate method because the solution you provide is the Q function with a given set of parameters mu that approximate the full posterior. But it is just an approximation. Uh, in, in general, you cannot achieve the, uh, the true uh, posterior. Okay, so uh, you can apply uh, this and instead of so you, you can vary uh, here and uh, you make use of different uh, uh, variational families, uh, variational distribution and uh, optimization method. For example, 
uh, if once you have defined the variational family and the variational distribution, and instead of uh, the uh, coordinate ascent, you can use a gradient ascent. So the thing is that you can uh, take the uh, partial derivative of the elbow respect to the new parameter and to ascend step by step into the solution. And if your data set is huge, instead of this, you can use the stochastic gradient ascent. Okay, but it is, you can use here your favorite uh, uh, optimization method. And in, in most of the cases, the, 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 the most suitable solution depend on your data, uh, the sample size, the, your model complexity, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so uh, this is an update. And uh, let's go to the original problem. So what uh, have we learned? Uh, what can we obtain with the heterogeneous and uh, missing data using now this simple uh, latent problem with discrete variable? So uh, if using our uh, heterogeneous data mixture model, that it is uh, this one, our graphical model is this. So we have now that the hidden variable Z is the one that factorizes the different data types. So uh, let's say it is very easy. So it is, uh, if one of the data type, for example, is missed. So if you don't have the uh, discrete part, it doesn't matter. Uh, because if you don't have this variable, you marginalize. But this is, uh, 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 this is factorized by a hidden variable Z. You don't calculate, you don't, you don't do any kind of estimation, you marginalize. And the uh, model remains the same, but with this uh, observation. So this makes the problem easy. Okay. And the data types, even if uh, in each of the component, uh, or if even it, it, uh, they are uh, factorized by the hidden variable, the data type are no longer independent, uh, independent into the mixture model, because basically the thing is that they are connected through the latent variable. And when you integrate the hidden variable, when you marginalize the hidden, the hidden variable to obtain the mixing model, all the data type, all the data type are mixed, okay? So, uh, if uh, in a favorable situation, so you're, uh, you are able to learn uh, your model and obtain a good mix between the different data types, okay? But still you have some problems that are inherent to the data. Let's say uh, one of the problems is the uh, likelihood scale problem. So uh, basically the thing that you do is you want to uh, obtain the best posterior approximation. But the contribution of, uh, of all the data to the general model through the likelihood can be very different. So if you have a binary or discrete variable, you know that this likelihood function, it is something that is between zero and one. Okay, and in the uh, binary and categorical, but with a limited amount of, of, of categories, in general, uh, except in, 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 in extreme case, uh, you don't go to the extreme cases, for, for example, a binary variable to take a, a 10 to minus three, the probability to be equal to, to, to one. So they are, uh, let's say, because you don't have such amount of data to obtain or to, 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 to be sure that there is your probability. Uh, so your uh, <clears throat> likelihood will be between zero and one and doesn't go to the extreme. But the problem comes for the continuous part because in the continuous part, uh, the likelihood is unbounded, okay? So, so you can have here, uh, quantity, the likelihood to be, let's say, 0.3. And uh, here, it could be 
uh, 10, to the th 10 to 3, 1,000. Or, on the other hand, this continues being extremely low, and it is not uh, very rare to have a low likelihood. If your model is complex uh, and your data is uh, multidimensional, uh, it is not uh, rare that it is continuous, the likelihood of this continuous, of a continuous uh, data sample becomes something in the order of 10 to minus three, 10 to minus four, something like this. So if you mix all of this, it is that there can be some data dominate, the data with higher likelihood in absolute term, it dominate, and the data with uh, low values of likelihood becomes irrelevant, okay? So, and this is a general problem dealing with heterogeneous data. There are several solutions for uh, deal with uh, this kind of problem. One of them it is, okay, uh, you can perform some sort of uh, normalization. And one thing that do, the, you, you, you can apply a deterministic transformation and uh, normalization. If you do a, a deterministic uh, transformation, basically the thing that you can do, it is you can transform all the discrete variable into continuous one. And after that, do some sort of normalization among the uh, likelihood to make that all the data uh, mix well into the mixture model. So here you have uh, a particular uh, solution, recent uh, uh, solution. Well, this is, this is for variational uh, autoencoder, but the, 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 the recipe is, is uh, just the same. Another thing, it is uh, other way of solving the uh, likelihood uh, scale problem. It is, uh, uh, transform uh, the data and uh, to work, for example, instead of working on uh, uh, the data itself, one thing that you can do is working on the um, distribution parameter. So because all the distribution parameter, let's say, are uh, on, the, on, the, on the similar order, uh, but uh, they are different uh, solution. Uh, you, uh, until you uh, have your data and you uh, uh, train uh, first the, the, the plain heterogeneous uh, mixture model, uh, you cannot realize if one of the data becomes irrelevant. So you have to check and if this situation occurs, you have several recipes to, to correct this, this kind of, of situation, okay? And, uh, this is respect to the heterogeneous uh, data. The other thing that you are dealing with is the uh, missing data. If you have a huge amount of missing data, uh, basically you can have two to that hand. One of them is the marginalization. Let's say is the, uh, so you can uh, marginalize respect to the uh, unknown, okay? This is one uh, solution. And the other is to uh, establish a more complex model in which you modulate with a binary variable the probability of missing. So you are, uh, you are modeling the missing pattern, okay? Uh, well, there is a little bit of uh, decision. Basically, the thing it is that uh, you can add another variable here that is also uh, hidden and you have to estimate it to be included uh, in your model and uses this new variable. It is the observation, it is just a product of this binary variable and the true uh, uh, value, okay, of the uh, observation. So this allows you to perform the inference and also to learn a little bit about the uh, missing pattern, okay? Because in, in some cases also, uh, the missing pattern could be informative, okay? And you can, with this uh, piece of the puzzle, so you can construct a more elaborate uh, data model. Okay, so uh, let's go to, a, let's transfer the Z now from discrete to continuous. So let's transform 
the uh, mixture model into a linear factor model. So in this case, or in this situation, maybe long, for example, uh, the probabilistic PCA, the probabilistic principal component analysis, okay? So in this case, uh, you transform uh, Z from discrete to continuous. And the, uh, here will appear the same problem that appear when you are transforming discrete variable to continuous one. In discrete variable, everything is uh, clear or everything is specified using the probability distribution. So you have those number and every information is, is contained in it, okay? But for, uh, but for continuous variable, you have to define a PDF, a probability density function. So you have to choose a family of function, okay? And this is, and the transformation uh, between one uh, data type and the other is, is not always so simple, okay? So uh, to maintain uh, tractability and, and, and to, 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 to maintain inference in something that is doable, one thing that you can do, it is uh, use a linear factor model, okay? So in this, you are transforming the discrete variable into a continuous variable into a k-dimensional space, okay? So basically the thing that you are saying, it is that uh, there is, uh, it is, this problem is, is, is very uh, common because there is the low dimensionality uh, where all the variability of the data reside, okay? So basically the thing that you are doing here is from going from X to Z, you are reducing the dimensionality of your data. And your problem here, it is find now the linear subspace uh, that contain your, most of your data or more your, of the variability of, of your data. And it can express in a continuous latent variable mode, okay? So in this, so you have to put a prior distribution over the Z, over the uh, latent uh, space. So uh, you can assume a, a very simple one. It is a normal distribution, zero mean, and independent component, okay? And the transformation between Z and X is governed by the model parameter that it is. So you have for each of the dimension of the uh, hidden space, you have a vector W, okay? And the thing that you do, it is for transforming each of the dimension of Z into X, you uh, make the dot product uh, between the uh, <clears throat> component, the uh, Z, and the uh, W uh, uh, vector, okay? And each of one generate a vector of uh, dimension D, that is the dimension of the data, okay? And you can put, you can arrange all of this into a matrix W, okay? So you have to put a prior on your model parameter, and you can assume a Gaussian prior, zero mean and identity covariant matrix, and uh, for the, the observation, your likelihood is a distribution that is a normal distribution as, that is as, that, as, as a mean, the uh, product between the W transpose times Z. And as a covariance, you can use, if you don't have other information and uh, independent noise or independence variance uh, component, all of them with the same variant as like this. So here, uh, for solving it, you can use your preferred uh, algorithm. So you can use uh, an EM algorithm. It is, the development is similar to the previous one, so you have to do the math, but it is, you have to estimate the uh, uh, expectation step, how to perform the expectation step. That is basically to take the posterior probability of Z, given X and given W, and after that to maximize the W, given a value 
for the hidden variable and the observation, okay? Or you can use the variational method. So you construct a mean field or another kind of uh, uh, factorization for the uh, variational function. And you perform your favorite optimization method. Let's say uh, you can perform the coordinate ascent, a gradient ascent, um, <clears throat> a stochastic gradient ascent, whatever you like, okay? So, and, and with this, the problem is over. But uh, using this, this, this one, uh, is this uh, the linear factor model, uh, you can uh, put or, or, or you can introduce a more complex model that a simple combination uh, between Z and W, let's say. And uh, with this, well, uh, uh, well, let's go after that. With this, you can have uh, one uh, recent uh, model that is uh, that it is it is exhibit the same uh, properties. It is the same structure, but there is a uh, there is a deep neural network inside, and this is the variational autoencoder. So the variational uh, autoencoder is nothing more and nothing less than a con uh, latent variable model, a continuous latent variable model. But now the uh, transformation between the hidden variable and the observation, it is not longer linear. It is governed by a, a deep neural network. Okay, so you have the same distribution for the hidden. So you have uh, the uh, distribution for the observation is the same, it's a normal one, but the transformation of both the mean and the covariance matrix it is not longer a linear combination of some weight, but it is uh, the output of a neural network that has as an input the z vector, okay? Uh, with parameter vector theta. As it, this is called the decoding network, okay? The, uh, the network that goes to the uh, low dimensional manifold now to the uh, observation. We are no longer talking about uh, subspaces, but manifold. Okay, so the variational uh, the, the, one of the of the of the key point here is the variational autoencoder. It is exactly the same. So you, so you can cope with the same kind of uh, model uh, method, etc. So, but uh, now the the uh, the problem now here is how to do the inference, how to fix all those theta parameters that determine what is the neural network, because the number of parameters now can be huge, depending on the layer, but you can have a uh, thousand and even millions of parameters. So the inference problem uh, is now so uh, difficult. So for doing this, uh, let's say, uh, we can perform, and it is uh, is variational autoencoder. His name comes from the variational uh, inference method. So we consider uh, any approximation Q of Z to the procedure of Z, and it is uh, proportional to this. So we are doing uh, the same. That is, we want to uh, uh, maximize the uh, elbow or minimizing the uh, chiral divergence between now the posterior uh, probability of the hidden variable and the posterior uh, the, the, the posterior probability and the uh, variational family we are making use of okay so our objective here is like in the previous uh, variational method is to maximize the elbow so First, we need to select a variational family for Q or Z. So uh, selecting the family, the family is the uh, inference network or encoding network, okay? So it is the network 
who defines your uh, uh, variational family, okay? Because basically the thing that you do is your Q is given by this distribution. So, and it's governed by the new, that it is the output of a neural network, and sigma, that is the output also of a uh, neural network, okay? And now, uh, the uh, maximization of the uh, elbow is become in this way, okay? This is the formulas. So, uh, recall that the, uh, uh, that the uh, prior probability of the hidden variable are, are still uh, independent and, uh, I, uh, and identically distributed Gaussian variable. And let's say on the Q and N, uh, the, the variational family that, uh, include the neural network. So uh, the thing that we do it is one, we have defined the elbow. Uh, we are no longer use the coordinate ascent because it is, is uh, very difficult. We attack di directly the uh, maximization of the elbow using uh, gradient ascent, okay? So the first thing it is, okay, you have or your parameter uh, eta of your both your uh, neural network. So you have to uh, determine the gradient of this kind of diversion of the uh, elbow uh, respect to your model parameter, okay? So, and for solving it, you can use a uh, stochastic gradient ascent. So you can, uh, uh, let's say, you can divide your data into pieces, into uh, mini batches, and you can uh, estimate the gradient of those parameters respect to this uh, mini batch. And the things, uh, the, 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 the use of mini batch, it is because here, if you have to determine a network, a neural network with a thousand of parameters, you will need a lot of data and it is uh, suitable to perform mini batch by, by mini batch, okay? So uh, in, in addition to the Kyle divergence, that is one of the term, we also need an um, unbiased gradient estimate for uh, the second term, for this uh, term. Uh, for doing this, we, we can use uh, Monte Carlo. This is an, an, an uh, expectation. We can use uh, a Monte Carlo sampling estimator, and after that, we can perform the uh, uh, gradient of this, okay? But it is, uh, let's say, uh, instead of collecting, uh, so that the inference problem, the computational problem is still uh, very hard because you have uh, a huge amount of, 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 of sample. And the only thing that you have to do or you need here is to uh, obtain the, an, an, an approximation of this uh, expectation term. You can use a simple one that is, okay, you can use a Monte Carlo sampling estimator, but with a single sample. Uh, the, the variance is also is, is huge, okay, but this, this computation is, is, is very cheap, okay? So now you have, uh, you have the gradient estimator for one of the 10 for the KIL divergence. Now you have an approximation for the expectation term of the elbow. And now you need to uh, calculate or you compute the gradient to respect to the uh, network parameter, okay? So this still is a huge problem. And uh, we can make sure, uh, we can make use of what is called the reparameterization trick. And it is expressing a sample as a deterministic function given soy nestor that is independent of the uh, uh, network parameter. So uh, for the Gaussian distribution, we can have this. This is a, uh, in, in, some, in some sense, it is similar to a Laplace uh, uh, approach. And we, when we put all these together, we have the uh, 
estimator of the variance and the uh, gradient estimator. Okay, so with all of this, the only thing we have to do is okay when you have the gradient update, it is uh, to put everything together as you construct the algorithm. So uh, you have uh, also additional model that we are not cope here. For example, uh, we have another uh, model that is a mix and emergency model. One of the uh, case it is the uh, LDA, the Latin Dirichlet uh, allocation. Uh, that is uh, also there is the matrix factorization. There is a very important uh, family of model that we are not covered here. That is uh, the Bayesian non-parametric model in which you don't have to assume a uh, k fix. Uh, instead of this, you can assume that your initial k is infinite, but you can compute everything for fixed k. Uh, this gives you a Bayesian non-parametric model. Here you have uh, nice overviews of those models. Or even you can, let's say, you can have a, a, a mix uh, between the mixture model and the continuous latent variable model. And you have continuous and discrete latent variable model. So you can, uh, let's say, what are you uh, want to obtain? Uh, let's say it is, uh, imagine that uh, what you obtain with mixture model if uh, some sort of uh, separation of your data between homogeneous groups. So it have to let you organize the data. And with a uh, latent uh, continuous model, the thing that you obtain, it is a low dimensional repre uh, representation of your data. If you have some structure, you can make use of this uh, structure using a continuous, uh, both continuous and discrete latent variable. It is like if we have heterogeneous data with a mix of continuous and discrete, the latent, the latent uh, variable or the, the, the latent variable could be also a mix among linear, uh, continuous and uh, discrete uh, variable model. I skip all the, uh, let's say, Markovian model. And I want to conclude with the sort take-home messages. Well, uh, all the model we have coped uh, here and the uh, model that we are not able to cope with, they provide you in probabilistic machine learning, not only uh, an, an, an estimate of the parameter, but a, a, a distribution of the parameters. So it provides the assessment or the uncertainty of your problem and also the probability or the possibility, sorry, of generating new sample, like in the uh, generative adversarial network, okay? And, but remember that you can make use of this basic element of this piece of the puzzle to uh, construct your model or the model that fits better into your own data, okay? Because perhaps your, your, your data doesn't fit in all the models that you can encounter in, in, in all the uh, software libraries. And once you have fixed your uh, data model, uh, it is very important to cope with uh, the inference method and to maintain the complexity of your uh, inference method at a, a level that can be something that it is doable. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. This concludes my, 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 my lecture. And if you have some questions, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you, Antonio, for this excellent overview and introduction. Now, I propose that we take questions um, iteratively from Slido and from the network. Um, I'll start with the Slido channel. The one question was just asked. Um, so the comment is excellent presentation. Uh, are there any innate limitations of elbow, for example, regarding posterior collapse? Have other regularization losses been explored for the VAE? Antonio. Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> yep. Uh, there is uh, so when uh, 
the thing is that uh, when you construct your, your uh, elbow, uh, the, the, the most important thing is that uh, uh, the, the maximization is possible and it is doable. So for example, uh, if you look to the uh, uh, variational uh, autoencoder, if you don't use the reparametration trick, uh, the computational problem will be huge. Like in, for example, also in some uh, uh, mixture of continuous and discrete variable, uh, the inference problem uh, may become something like the, or similar in complexity to uh, estimating the evidence of the, of the, of the model. So one of the uh, critical part here is to maintain your uh, inference method, the, 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 the computational part of your uh, inference, inference method to something that is manageable. Manageable in terms of sample data size, but this is, can be managed using the uh, mini watches and uh, stochastic gradient uh, uh, optimization, but also the uh, ability to reach the solution. So there is another part here that is, okay, uh, first you have to reach to a reasonable solution and you have to check when your solution is close to the optimum or not. So you can see how the uh, evolution of the elbow become uh, when you are performing uh, optimization or the different terms of the elbow. So you have to uh, monitorize everything in order to uh, warranty that you reach a, a reasonable solution. And also that this uh, solution is feasible. And in some cases, even you can propose very beautiful model in which you are unable to, uh, to reach the solution because your inference problem is very, very ill-conditioned. So, so also, but you have a ill-conditioned problem and you have a lot of literature about uh, regularization technique in order to make it possible. So it is, uh, you have to iterate over your data, your model, your inference, until you achieve something that is uh, reasonable. And even there is a, for the next uh, NIPS, there will be a, a, a workshop that it is uh, dedicated when, uh, for situation in which you have done all of this and you still don't have achieved a reasonable solution. Thank you, Antonio. Then we have time for one more question from the network. And I see here uh, that uh, Giovanni Rizona has a question. Giovanni. Hi, first of all, thank you for the talk. It was really great. So my question is, you mentioned earlier a few different methods for uh, performing inference. Uh, so Laplace approximation, uh, various scenario inference, MCMC. Which criteria should I use to choose which one to employ? So if I had, say, limited computational power or low amount of data, something like that. Well, uh... Well, first of all, it is the Laplace approximation, except in very simple model. Uh, it is, they don't provide a high quality solution because it is too simple. And basically the thing that you put is a Gaussian into each one of the uh, unknown. Okay. The MCMC method, uh, it, it has, uh, they, uh, in some cases, they are very slow to converge. And at the, hand, at, at the end, you don't have any, uh, uh, let's say, uh, um, explicit representation of your posterior. The only thing that you can get it is, so if you are fine with this, uh, okay. And, and even you have to, to, to solve the different problem because uh, for example, if you have a discrete variable, you have to cope with uh, 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 the switching label uh, problem but you have still some trick, like the marginalization of some of them, so uh, or blah, regularization, and et cetera. Uh, and, and, and also there is, but if you are able, if, if, if you are fine with sample, it could be fine. And also respect to the EM and the variational, the EM only provide you a, a point estimate. Okay, so uh, if you are fine with this point estimate, 
it's okay. And, and in some cases, it could be simple. Okay. But if you obtain a, a, some information about the uncertainty or the sensibility of your problem, you can go either to the full probability method that it is either the variational on the MCMC. And um, let's say it is, uh, this is the basic tool and you have to iterate to do a literature search to uh, find uh, the solution to all the problem of your, with, you, with your model. But there is not a universal recipe. Or the, 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 the only recipe that I can give you, it is, okay, put a model, uh, do the inference, uh, see if you are able mm -hmm. to obtain it, refine the model, refine the inference, and go until you achieve a problem in with a, a level in which you are happy with the result. Thank you, Antonio. Uh, thank you for answering the questions and also for this uh, great start into the summer school.